Hello there, YouTube. Sean with S-Split Simulations back with you. Part 2 of PFPX, uh, Professional Flight Planner Pro, or Professional Flight Planner X, rather, for all uh, flights and platforms. Today, uh, we're going to plan a flight. We're going to be planning with the uh, Flight One King Air 200 model. Uh, departing from Concord, North Carolina, up to uh, Albany, New York. A flight I personally have never done. But we're going to plan it out and see what it looks like, and uh, maybe I actually will do this in a, in a future video. Uh, part one, if you need to go back and take a look, is basically the initial setup of PFPX and taking a look um, at many of the different options and features here uh, within the menus. Um, so let's just pretty much just get right down to it. We're going to build a new flight, straightforward, and then we will look at a few of the uh, options and other neat little tools and... Uh, gadgets here in PFPX. So first we're going to go over here to uh, New Flight. It'll pull up your flight uh, window here. We don't have an airline code. We're going to be flying an interregistered uh, King Air today. We will put this down. We won't have a flight number there either. But uh, our from field, we'll just fill in Concord, which is uh, Juliet, Quebec, Foxtrot. We're going to go to Albany, which is uh, Alpha Lima Bravo. There we go. Now, just for our planning purposes, we're going to default these runways here. Um, and we'll just leave them there for now. I know I know, taking off from Concord is a fairly short taxi. I'm not sure about Albany because I've never been there. So we're going to add an extra five minutes. We'll add ten minutes of uh, taxi in time. And it's going to be a domestic flight. It's an in-numbered uh, aircraft. We'll leave that as today's date and time. So, with that, we can go ahead and close out this window since it is completing, completed. I usually like to have more, more than two windows open at a time. Makes things a little more simpler. Just click that. Minimizes that window. So today we're going to be flying November 2987 Foxtrot King Air 200. It's going to be a standard configuration. We can look at the options here. Um, and you can address the weights and things like that. I haven't looked into it. I haven't had the need to because... This, this profile is actually pretty spot on. So just taking a look here at the different weights and everything's already pretty pretty much set in there for us. We're going to have a normal climb. We're going to have a... Uh, let's see if we can set that as max for now. All right. The initial altitude will be optimum. Our step climb will be 2,000. We're at... Uh, we're going to uh, altitude cap this at 35,000, which is, it was already preset because that is the service ceiling for the King Air 200 with the Black Hawk uh, modifications, which the Flight 1 model does uh, depict very well. Okay, so we're going to uh, we're gonna put a couple people, a couple passengers on this uh, aircraft today. So we're going to have two pilots, and uh, we'll go four passengers. So a total of six. No children, no infants. Um, that puts us at 144 in baggage. We'll add about 50 pounds of cargo. Our zero fuel weight and uh, our max zero fuel takeoff, or I'm sorry, our max zero fuel weight there is uh, pre-calculated for us. We're going to close that out. Each individual little green dot here will show you uh, each step that is already successfully and in, 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 is successful and ready to go. We're going to add about 45 minutes of extra time onto this uh, flight because again, I've never been to Albany. Don't know exactly what to expect on the approach. You never know. Um, so we're going to put that in there. Calculated that into our our fuel. We don't need any extra fuel. We're not going to put any whole time in here because we've got the 45 extra minutes. Normally you would, but uh, for this instance, we're not going to need to. We're not tankering any fuel. We're not bringing any contingency. We're not uh, expecting. We're not setting a prerequisite as to how much we want to have left when we get there. That is complete. Let's take a look at our route. Now this is a pretty important spot, I think, for just about everybody. And with that being said, um, it, it's it's not actually that difficult. You can enter this manually. It's not that difficult. Um, today, we're just going to let it auto-build a route for us. Um, only because, for the sake of just simplifying this out evenly. Um, maybe one of the next videos, maybe part 2.5, we'll manually edit and build a flight plan. Which, is, like I said, is fairly straightforward. So... We'll go here. We are going to let it find us a flight plan. 
There we go. So we've got our departure and our transition, the different VORs, the jet routes. Plan that out perfectly. And there we go. Now we can come over here and look at the map. The yellow line depicts the direct routing. And of course the red line depicts the actual route built by PFPX. Pretty nice. Pretty, And it's not actually not too bad of a route. It does bring us a little further east and then on direct, but uh, that's, that's just following out the departure and then pretty much a straight line to Albany. We didn't... Now you see... I did this on purpose. We are done with this window, so we're going to go ahead and close that out. We don't have any circuit in and circuit out time. The fuel window did not green. For some reason, it did not take my extra fuel time. There we go. We'll put that back in there. Now today, we don't need an alternative button. Let's just say we did. See if it'll find us one. Go down here. Go to find. We can set the parameter of, um, you know, minimum time, minimum fuel. We're going to go minimum distance. Let it find it for us. Brings up a list of the civil, and then of course you can also select military airports in the area. It also shows the distance. So let's go with, I am actually kind of familiar with Mechanicville. We won't choose that. We'll actually go to Schenectady. Just double click that. Boom. There you go. The alternative is set. Just to take a look here at our advanced field. None of this is pretty much needed for um, our sake, but you can fill in different boxes here. Anything you edit or anything you add here uh, in the in any of these boxes will actually show up on the flight plan, the flight packet, or I'm sorry, the flight packet that we will put together. Uh, here towards the end of the flight planning session. So we'll just put split S sim or split S video rather in there. Go back over here to your general tab. So just once and for all let's just take a look and we can open these up just to make sure that uh, we are satisfied with everything. Everything looks very good. No uh, anomalies of any sort. So there we go. All right, and find destination alternative routes. Let's pull that up. There we go. Yep, so it picked the routing for the direct or for the uh, alternative. The uh, Airfield there. So now we're going to go ahead and comp compute our flight. It's going to put everything together. And boom, that is completed. You've planned your first flight. Very straightforward. Concord to Albany. Not very difficult there. Now, we are going to go ahead and release the flight. Prepare it for... Uh, prepare it for actual printing. Let's take a look at the details really quick. Uh, I like this, how it breaks this down into your different weights in your taxi and things like that. Um... So basically, we need to plan uh, for 2,117 pounds of fuel. Uh, and then, of course, that all breaks down here into your trip and uh, things like that. It's actually a very nice way it breaks it down. And then, of course, your ramp weight and uh, many other things. Now, as you can see, we're very we're about 1,000 plus pounds below weight, so we're good to go there. Take a look at our flight plan here. Pretty much gives you standard information. And then, of course, you can go in and fill this in and uh, write over it once you print it, if you so choose. Quite a bit of information here. You can also look here and, and see the different uh, routing information. Two different waypoints. Pretty awesome stuff. I tell you, this is, this is some of the best fl uh, flight planning software out there. This is the best. Um, looking at our weather, it's going to pull the NOTAMs, or I'm sorry, going to pull the METARs for each individual airport and the TAFs. It's pretty cool. The weather here in uh, Concord looks pretty good. Looks fairly decent there in Albany as well. Looks like a good night to fly. So we're going to go ahead and release this flight. And boom, it is ready to print. 
Now, also, from this point forward, you can also uh, export it out to your different payware and uh, freeware add-ons. Pull that window up here. Now, uh, of course, you'll want to direct it to your FSX folder. I'm not sure why I've got that pointed there. Got that maybe a little mixed up or something. But uh, go down here. We'll just go to our Favorites tab. I've got it exporting out to Microsoft, uh, uh, Microsoft, the Microsoft uh, Flight Plan file. PMDG would have automatically pull up those in the uh, FMS and VATSIM, so it'll actually connect to VPilot, Squawkbox, and things like that. Um, and it'll pull all that data straight up into it without me having to type it out. It saves a ton of time, but I'm sure we're all aware of that. So, we'll go ahead and exit that out. But if you were to, we could actually, we'll go ahead and do that while we're here. There we go. Three routes saved. Everything was exported out and ready to go. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and print flight plan. We're not going to print this. We'll just put it up into a PDF and do a quick view. Now, over here, all these checkboxes, you can all these information here. You can add all this information and uh, print that out as needed. In terms of uh, your release details and cover sheet, you can... To save you paper, some of these things you might not need because maybe you have Active Sky up or things like that. You can uh, exclude the wind charts and stuff like that if you so choose. But we're going to go ahead and export that out. And we'll open it up here in Adobe. So, the flight briefing package Concord to Albany. Date and time. Looks very nice. It's very professional, very neat. Uh, it's got my name there. That's pretty cool. Um, and again, what we've seen in PFPX, it's got the breakdown of all the different uh, weights of fuels there going to be needed. Remember that uh, piece of text I put into the flight plan notes? Of course, there it is right there, split S video. Pretty much all our pertinent information in terms of our crews and initial altitude. Um, fuel bias and things like that. Looks like uh, PFPX initially put us out of flight level 310 for that uh, for this flight today. Of course all our different weights, passenger count, cargo. Very straightforward. Like I said, this is stuff we've already seen in PFPX. We'll scroll down here. Here's our wind charts for our different major waypoints through our um, flight plan. It's pretty awesome. You have that information handy. Like I said, I know I normally would... You can do one of two things. You can print this out and have it, you know, having it set it right next to you, or you could also have it and export it or send it to um, a tablet and use a PDF reader and have that handy, like a uh, paperless flight deck. It's actually a really cool thing. I've got an old iPad I use that for. And I can also actually do it with my... Um, Galaxy S4 uh, Samsung phone that uh, s the screen's not huge but it's adequate for something like this for a quick glance. Um, oh, okay, yeah, and it also printed, like I said, it checked our, we checked our NOTAM, so we're going to get all the NOTAMs for the different airports there. Um, see if it even gave us the alternate destination NOTAMs. That's pretty awesome. It sure did. Yep, look at there. That's pretty cool. And then looking at our, <laughs> looking at the wind charts, that's pretty cool. I, I haven't l used that view yet before. That's pretty. That's actually a, a really cool thing to have, especially on one of those longer flights, um, with a bigger airplane. Which, of course, you can use any aircraft in this. In terms of PMDG's triple seven, the Duke, um, real air sim, Duke, and things like that. You can use pretty much anything. Uh, in this program, and that's pretty cool. Uh, with that being said, let's take a, cute, a few quick looks here while we've got this flight plan built out over here into the uh, world map view. Uh, on the bottom here, there's a few different, not uh, different notes or different tabs that you can use. Um, right here, of course, has got our NOTAMs. We can put, there is actually the northern route tracks, the Pacific and the Australian. Those are all, of course, updated. 
And then, of course, we can put some information in the scratch, uh, scratch pad there just to have some notes if we need them to. Um, over here, we can turn off many of the different things. We can toggle some airways. We can toggle directs. There's just so many options here, so many different things. We can turn on intersections, VORs, and NDBs. And uh, different options there. So with that being said, um, like I said in the first video, PFPX is going to be something that we're going to hold on to and use for many, many years to come. And if this is a base, and now I don't know of any expansions or anything like that they're able to move forward with a PFPX. Even I don't even know if any are necessary. But if this is a base, this is this is amazing. And this is far and beyond anything out there else out there. Um, and then of course if you also own Topcat, uh, takeoff and landing uh, information um, software, then this syncs up with it perfectly. And you can use both at the same time. Uh, so with that being said, um, PFPX is probably one of the best pieces of software I've ever purchased and I, I look forward to using it and getting more in-depth and uh, doing some more videos with ETOPS, redispatches and things like that in the near future. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.